Denise Gwen, reading aloud for you from my short story, The Greasy Spoon, chapter 24. That's one down, Ed said, wiping his hands on his pants. Where'd you find the knife? I had a dollar bill left in my pocket and that sweet little Mexican girl gave it to me. Good thing you're a lousy tipper, Ed grunted. Nick looked down at the body. Should we pull it out of him for the next one? Well, let's get his shotgun first. Oh, right, Nick said, good thinking. He was still awfully muzzy headed. He picked up the shotgun from the floor and rested it in the crook of his elbow. Now, the knife. Ed hunkered down and studied the inert form. Not a bad idea, just in case, right? Hey, I tell you what, let's grab him by the ankles and lay him out flat, and that way you can get the knife out. Good idea. Nick laid the shotgun down onto the concrete floor, then bent down to his haunches. And he and Ed grabbed one ankle each and they pulled Buddy's legs across the floor and his body remained keeled over. And then Ed lifted his foot and placed it on Buddy's head and pushed hard. And the head lifted and the torso lifted with it and the man flopped over backwards and lay spread out flat. And when Buddy's body was at last stretched out, Ed straddled the dying man and put his hands around the knife hilt and tried to pull it out, but it was slick with blood and his hands kept flying off the hilt. God damn it. Wait, hold on, Nick said. What? Use this. He ripped off his shirt, not even bothering to unbutton it because after all, what was the use? The shirt was gone. Still, he had on an undershirt. He wrapped the Brooks Brothers shirt around the knife hilt and this time Ed pulled the knife free of Buddy's chest. Nick looked down at Buddy's face and started with shock. Buddy was staring right up at him. He blinked. Fuck, Nick said. He's still alive. Oh yeah? Ed gazed down at Buddy with the dripping wet knife in his hand. Buddy's wide open mouth had filled with blood. And as his lips moved, the blood lake spilled out over his lips and seeped down his face as his gaze remained fixed on Nick's eyes. A thread of uneasiness flitted through him and the hairs on the back of his neck prickled. He scanned the area but didn't see anybody. Where the fuck are they? He whispered. Don't know, Ed said, looking around him. Okay, so what do we do now? Nick gazed down one last time into Buddy's eyes. The lips had stopped moving. The neck muscles relaxed, the head tilted down, bringing with it a river of blood pouring down the flaccid cheeks, the stubby chin. But Nick focused on Buddy's eyes. He wanted to see the moment that the life left him, and it happened a second later. One second he was still alive, clinging feebly to it, the next he was gone. His eyes glazed over, his pupils withdrew into tiny dots and disappeared, swallowed up into an opaque stillness. Silence. We killed a man, Nick said. I killed him, Ed said. I helped you. We both killed him. They stared at the dead man. Nick shifted uneasily from one foot to the other. I feel like someone's watching us, he said in a low voice. But I'm also thinking that maybe we can still get the fuck out of here. What are you thinking? Why don't we head back the way we came, leave through the office, and commandeer one of the trucks? I'd be willing to bet you they left the keys in the ignition. Ed cocked his head. That kid had to go back to the truck to get his keys to unlock us. 
Yeah, and I don't know what he did with his keys after he did that. They looked at one another. Don't people out in the country leave their keys in the ignitions in their cars and trucks all the time? Ed asked with a faint smile. Yes, they sure do. It's worth a try. Plus, there's a phone in the office. We just need to be careful we don't get shot. I hear you, bro. Let's go. Nick picked up the rifle and they retraced their steps down the grim corridor, but they didn't get far. A metal door blocked them. I don't remember this door, Nick said. We must have walked through it earlier when Buddy took us from the office to the slaughterhouse. Ed looked around him. But somebody else closed it while I was killing him. So who did that and why didn't he come to help him? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. Nick ran his fingers down the door frame. And I don't see any way to open this door from our side. It's to stop the hogs from running up this way, Ed said. Okay, so that's not going to work, Nick said. I wonder who closed it. Whoever did is probably watching us. Yeah, Ed said, looking up at the ceiling. Okay, so let's head back. At least now, Nick said with a grim smile, we're armed.